All right, I am so excited to be here at Worship Summit Live. My name is Paul Richards, and I'm also the author of a book called Helping Your Church Live Stream, which I published in 2019. And wow, so many of you out there have read this book and given it a good review. Thank you if you have. Today I'd like to summarize this book and update it with so many of the new technologies that houses of worship are using to effectively communicate the message of God internally inside of houses of worship as we come back together and externally as well. In fact, we're going to look at internal communications, social media communications, and then how that affects the message that we're trying to send externally as it pertains to live streaming, video production, and what you can do to help your church live stream. So let's get started. So I get so excited when I get a chance to help people learn. And I feel like that makes me very similar to perhaps your pastor or folks at your house of worship or congregation who are helping to spread the message of God. We want to help people learn. And one thing that in particular that we talk about in the second chapter of Helping Your Church live stream is understanding how people learn. There's a statistic that says over 65% of Americans are visual learners. They identify as learning by seeing. And a more recent study done in colleges show that 97% of students are interested in electronic learning. 84% say that visual learning helps them have a better grasp of their content that they're doing and learning. And 67% agree that audio visuals in general help them better understand the material that's being discussed. Now, most houses of worship have already made investments investments of some kind in audio visual. You'll be happy to know that if your church or congregation or synagogue has an audio system of any kind, it can likely be used for your live stream. And we'll talk about some of the technology in the back half of this presentation, but understanding how people learn is so empowering. In fact, there are three types, three main categories of learners. One is auditory, right? Folks who learn by storytelling. Folks who learn by listening. And that is obviously a core way that many pastors and leaders in houses of worship like to communicate. The next learning style is, of course, visual. Connecting with visual items, whether it's on a projector or a television or it's a picture that's passed around. Visual learners are easier to connect with with live streaming. We can combine audio and video together with live streaming. Now the third major type is called kinesthetic and those folks like to actually feel things. They're hands-on learners. Those folks are likely not going to get the same experience from a live stream as they will attending church. But as we think about these different types of learners and how we can connect with them, I want to tie that idea into your internal communications, your social media communications, and then your external facing communications with the world. So internally at your organization, one of the most important things you can do when you're getting started with your live streaming digital ministry ish initiatives is to get everybody on the same page. And that was one of the big reasons why I wrote Helping Your Church Live Stream. So it's available as an audio book. It's available for free online. And this helps pastors kind of understand a higher level look at why we're using live streaming and video production technology to spread the message of God. So the why question can be answered internally. And once it's kind of approved internally, we can start to bake it into a larger social media and external communications plan. Now, before we leave the idea of internal communications inside your organization, I've spoken to so many people who talk about the difficulty of getting volunteers to become involved 
with the digital ministry initiatives at their house of worship. So there is a chapter all about working with volunteers, and there's a lot of tips that I can share with you to get younger people more involved. Building your team and getting people excited about the opportunity to use technology to share the messages that are happening on Saturday, Sunday, around the entire calendar year at your organization can get people excited. It's an exciting thing. This is exciting technology. And we will talk about technology pretty soon. But getting volunteers is a process and training them is a process. So again, that's why we have all the free tutorial videos that come with this book to help people get excited. So we're all using the same vocabulary. We're kind of talking about the same types of things. And volunteers can be, you know, you can post for volunteers in your weekly bulletins. You can get the word out on social media. You can get the word out. Now, Many volunteers have specific skills. And as a leader, you want to make sure that you're bringing new people into the opportunities that are available and then seeking out the individual skills that volunteers can bring to your digital ministry initiatives. You might find a young woman who's very skilled with social media. That could be a huge benefit to your organization, and we'll talk about how in a moment. You might find a young man who is more interested in the technology, and perhaps they might be a good tech person working the video production software or a PTZ camera joystick control. Controller. If you're working with younger individuals who are in their teenage years, you know, we can uh, give them a PTZ camera controller with an Xbox joystick so it feels like the video games that perhaps they play at home. There's a lot of things you can do and we'll talk about working with volunteers and the opportunities to give them real world working experiences that they can put on their resume and help build them into stronger candidates for jobs in the job market as well. So regarding social media, it is an incredibly powerful tool for people to share what they love about your church. And I find it so incredible, you know, social engagement is really like the word of mouth. And, and we all know that word of mouth is one of the strongest ways to form connections and get the word out about something amazing. We've all been told by friends to attend a, a beautiful Christmas or Hanukkah celebration. And that has holds weight because it comes from someone that we know and trust. Social media allows us to make it very easy for members of our congregation to share specific pieces of content with their broader social media network, with their friends and family. That's an incredible thing, but we need to peel back some of the layers of the onion to understand how we can be effective. Because yes, you can live stream your Sunday services to Facebook and to YouTube, and people who can't make it or people who are at home can not only attend, but they can share those precious live moments with the world. But as a viewer, as someone who might not know your church, which is the majority of the world, they might see the live stream kind of like a window, and you're looking in to a Sunday service, and that's great. But it's not necessarily a bridge. And, and what we want to do is we want to build a bridge where people start looking through a window, looking through the video, the live stream that's happening right now, and then understand that their friends are inviting them to walk through the door. And understanding that there's an enhanced experience inside the church, inside the synagogue, inside the mosque, where they can upgrade their experience from watching passively and get to know people. Now, a few ways that can be done is through social media, through a recommendation of a friend. And there's one tip in this book that I just absolutely love, and that's the check-in, the Facebook check-in feature, where folks can come to church, check in, and it automatically lets all of their friends know that they're at church. Now, when someone sees that notification, they go, oh, look, my friend or my family member is here now. Let's take a look. Then they immediately see, oh, look, now I'm looking at a live stream 
I wonder where my friend is. They're starting to play the Where's Waldo game. And so through that ability to connect your organization with real people that other people know, that's the power of social media. If we're looking at it through that lens, we're making great progress because we're getting real people to make real recommendations and starting to see what you are all about and starting to see that inspiring pastor, inspiring leader that's speaking during your live stream on a Saturday or a Sunday. Now we're starting to get people to even consider where is the church? Where is it located? How could I get there? How far is it from my home? What's the likelihood that I can get my whole family to, to go there you know, next weekend? Well, now it's gonna be easier because we have a friend who we know, we can talk about it, we can start getting these questions answered and it start people start to gravitate towards your organization through the use of social media. There's a lot more to talk about, but I want to I only have 20 minutes so I and I really want to talk about the tech. So there's a lot more in this book you can download totally for free below. We'll put the link somewhere. Um, but let's look at two churches locally here in Pennsylvania that have been doing amazing things that I've been able to go behind the scenes and show you guys a little bit about what they're doing. Hey everybody, we are here at the beautiful Abington Presbyterian Church and they have let us come inside to take a look at their new live streaming system that they got set up right before the holidays. Let's take a look. All right, I'm gonna take my mask off while we're doing this video. Let's take a look at the church space. On this side, we have the video production booth. On the far side over here, we have a 20X PTC camera and behind us, over here on this wall, we have a 30X. Now, the idea here was to get a 30X PTZ camera that could zoom in 135 feet away from the stage. And it actually does a great job. And we'll take a look at what it looks like in the computers over here. On this side over here, we have a 20X camera and this is much closer to the stage. So it's being used to capture singers and musicians, and it gives a nice cross shot. Now you'll see that there's these beautiful stained glass windows up here, which will show you how beautiful that looks with the PTZ cameras. In fact, John, uh, one of the volunteers here, said that the PTZ cameras are able to reveal details in the beautiful woodwork and stained glass windows that a lot of people didn't even, aren't even able to see with their you know, regular eyes because the cameras can reveal that. So there's an audio system that's already in place. So for this installation, two PTZ Optics cameras are connected via SDI cabling and then converted to USB with an SDI to USB capture card. From there, we also have serial cabling and we're using the Huddlecam HD serial joystick controller. There's two cameras that you, volunteers can quickly switch between and we can call camera presets. So let's take a look at all of that at the video production booth. So I'm here with John Dwyer, who's gonna tell us a little bit about the different phases of the live streaming system that you put in place here. Abington has been running a video ministry since the late 1980s. Uh, using basically uh, starting with a camcorder. With the start of COVID, uh, we ended up having to really do some, uh, some more creative work associated with that. We had, uh, we had done some live streaming in the past, but in reality, um, the system that we had was not really adequate to do. Uh, with the advent of COVID, we were uh, making a DVD recording, converting that to an MP4, editing it, and then posting it on YouTube for our folks to read. We had a three-phase live stream project. Um, part one of the project was to replace the existing analog cameras with uh, something which is uh, much, more, much more suitable. This has just gone through all the 1080p cameras. Part two was to upgrade our analog wireless uh, uh, microphones to digital and part three was to do the infrastructure work to get a network cable back to this part of the room which in a building which was built in the 1960s is an interesting trick and actually some of this building dates back to uh, <clears throat> to 1898 so it was, it's always an interesting trick 
Uh, we have two computers. Uh, we have a live stream computer, which uh, the, the vMix computer, and we have a second computer that uh, we refurbished from an office computer that runs ProPresenter. Uh, on a Sunday morning, there are two people here. Uh, there is one person operating the cameras, and the second person is running ProPresenter. In vMix, there are two cameras. So you have a rear camera and a side camera. Can you tell me about those two cameras and, and what you've been able to do with those? Well, the original rear camera was right above us. Uh, when we did the modifications to install these cameras, we moved it to the other side. Uh, the rear camera is a 30x zoom camera, so it gives us the capability to zoom in very close to a lot of different things. Uh, the side camera we use to, uh, as either an alternate shot or actually the side camera will zoom down to the baptismal font. Um, if we have uh, a wedding with a family sitting in the front row, front row we, can, uh, we could zoom down to that family. Uh, the side camera also gives us the capability to shoot back to the back. So if the choir is processing, for example, we can shoot back to the back to, uh, uh, to see the choir. It, the two cameras and the two different give us two different views of, uh, of basically the way things are going and the, or the way sort of parts of the service. And I also understand you're using NDI um, to connect ProPresenter and vMix together? Uh, we're using NDI for two things. Uh, number one is to connect vMix to ProPresenter, so there's, uh, uh, the, the, the two computers are separately wireless or separately wired connected. The second reason we put NDI in is to be able to run a computer and a, and a uh, display um, in another part of the building. Uh, should we need to, with COVID, we're going to have an obviously a uh, seriously restricted uh, uh, participation when we actually get back to having in-person participation. So we used NDI for overflow uh, to be able to connect to a projector and a computer in a different part of the building. Congratulations with what you've done and simplifying it down to something that um, that volunteers can actually you know, operate and understand. I know that was kind of tricky sometimes to simplify it down. Uh, I did leave you with the unofficial guide to VMX. Thank you. And then the Helping Your Church uh, live stream book that we can give to the volunteers as well. Yeah, the Helping Your Church live stream was actually quite in instrumental as we were, uh, I'm an audio guy and I've been an audio guy forever. And I'm not a video guy. Um, and as we were starting to do the design process, we started to do some fair amount of research. And one of the things we came up with was the, uh, the guide to live streaming that you wrote, which uh, was actually quite useful in getting, uh, getting us up to speed on the uh, information that we need to know to, uh, to be able to start the design process or continue the design process. I'm so glad it was helpful. So we'll take a quick look at the joystick and the cameras and the different views that you have. So why don't we show that, show that off? If we have preset set so that, for example, uh, preset number one is the, is the lectern, preset number two is the pulpit, and other presets that are established through the, uh, you know, for, for common, common views during the service. If I'm seeing this correctly, you have two cameras and each of the presets go to the same place just from a different That's angle. That's correct. That's the, you know, to keep it, to keep it very simple for the... Aha, uh... uh -huh. so let's take a look at this. <laughs> this looks like something that other churches could definitely learn from. So, so can you explain this to me, what we're looking at here? Yeah, when we were setting this up originally, the, 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 uh, the volunteers who do this are, are volunteers and... Uh, uh, we have a number of them who cycle in and out, so we needed to make this as simple as possible. Uh, the way we did that was to basically say, okay, with presets, preset number zero. And that is the shot that will come up when the camera is turned on as well, preset zero. So you have a nice slow fade. Is that it's something? It's a nice especially? slow fade to the wide shot from the, from the side camera. And again, you can see the difference in the same... Uh, the, the difference that, the, that two cameras from two different perspectives gives us. So why don't we show a zoomed in shot of the, um, the stained glass. This is one of the shots that just was, it was one of these, as soon as I did it, it was wow. There this is go. our stained glass window in the front, as you can see. And this is, this is, this is, this is the side camera view of it. 
When we start to go into 30x zoom, we're shooting between two of the beams, by the way. That's what you're seeing there. But when you go into the zoom, you realize that there is actually stained glass in the eyelash, eyelashes and in the lips. And you get to see detail that was just absolutely amazing that you couldn't see before, that you, ne you never even realized was there. Incredible. In fact, for, let's look at it from that side camera because I feel like that view is really nice. Now, this is a long fade. Obviously, we can change it, but it right. looks beautiful the way that you have it set up. So can we zoom in any further on this one? Oh, yeah, so you can definitely see it pretty well there. Oh, there is stained glass in there. Look at that. Now, we've gone through and optimized a few settings. We added the sharpness in vMix. We did a little bit of black stretch and color correction. Um, but most of the settings in the camera are set to automatic because the lighting does change from day to day. In this facility, the lighting is fairly well stable. There's not a lot of outside light that we're dealing with. So uh, it, is, it is pretty stable. And one of the things that we're doing for... Um, for COVID, uh, we are having services, we are live streaming services on Sunday morning, and we are having singers. And we put the singers in the north transept so that they are socially distanced, very socially distanced from any of the other participants in the service. And again, having the side camera gives us the capability to do that. Uh, we can also use the side camera to get shots of the stainless windows on the side or the, the artwork and so forth. So the audio is coming through an Allen and Heath digital audio mixer, which is controlled generally by this iPad remotely. And then it all comes in to this rack here, which converts the analog audio over XLR into USB so that we can bring it into vMix for the live stream with a Focusrite Scarlett 2i2. Now, all the cabling has been managed really nicely down here. This is an old church, so the cables are run underneath the floor here. You can see there's a drill through the floor. There's some conduit here to nicely move two stereo left and right audio cables, an SDI cable for each camera, and then a serial control cable, because as I mentioned, we're using the serial joystick controllers. Now, I also want to show you guys how the cameras are mounted, so let's take a look at that. So we have our 30X camera, the rear camera, all the way in the back, and then a 20X up here on the wall. And you'll notice that the cameras have been mounted upside down. So they're using a standard HCCM1 wall mount. You'll notice it's a white camera with a white mount, so it makes the cameras very discreet and unobtrusive in this beautiful worship space. But they're mounted upside down so that we can capture shots that go very much you know, downward facing. If the cameras were facing upward, they have a limited tilt ability to go down. So by flipping them upside down, now we can shoot straight down to get the folks in the front row if there's a family who has a wedding or a baptism. It also is very nice to capture those angles of baptismal uh, ceremonies. And then again, just a lot of different angle options, whether we're looking to the left and looking back or we're looking in the front row, the baptismal area. It's just a good idea to invert the camera images. Then you can go into the camera settings and make it look normal by inverting the image. So the camera's mounted upside down, but obviously everything's inverted to look perfect. All right, well, I hope you guys enjoyed that video here. Thank you so much, John, for taking the time. Thank you very much for coming, and thank you guys for being so much help when we, uh, as part of our design process to get this running. It's been my pleasure. Such a beautiful church. So I've heard nothing but good things about organizations who start the process of getting together an audiovisual system that can live stream, that can be used for Zoom webinars, that can be used for training sessions and recording videos, for weddings and all of these things. It's an incredible thing. And I just wanted to share some of my love for education with you before I go. 
Um, one book that I think is a great one, again, these are all available for free download, uh, but they're also available on Amazon if you'd like a paperback, uh, is The Basics of Live Streaming. And the reason why I make these available for free is because you can print them out at the printer in your church, print out a couple copies, and just start handing them out to your volunteers. Because if we start to position this opportunity to help volunteer at your house of worship, we're giving people the opportunity to have real world experience and understanding the basics of live streaming is a great one that they could really prepare themselves for a great career in video production. Many, many churches I work with use OBS. It's the world's most popular free live streaming software. This book I wrote in 2020 is called The Unofficial Guide to Open Broadcaster Software. I just recently released a new one called the OBS Super User Guidebook. This has been super popular. Um, and again, I'm just sharing my love for learning and education and teaching here in these books so that you can sit down, you can get away from the computer screen. We all know we get too much screen time, right? And read a book and reinforce the foundational knowledge that will take your mission further. I'm trying to think of a couple other ones. Another one that I highly recommend is called The Unofficial Guide to NDI. All of these books have online courses which are posted for free on our Stream Geeks YouTube channel, so check that out. And again, we're trying to help you through your journey of learning. There's so much out there. If you have a question for me, let me know. I'm gonna be here in the chat. I wanna be able to answer that. But I think at a core level, what we're trying to do here is modernize our communications in a world that is changing very rapidly, but it's for the better. It really is. I'm very optimistic about folks who have an amazing message. You have everything you need to go viral on the internet. Now, is that your goal? No, you generally you don't your goal is not to go viral, but you do it is part of your mission to spread the message of God, to spread your message to as many people as you can. And I think with the right amount of foundational knowledge and the amazing tools that are available in our interconnected digital society that we live in today, the future is really incredible. And that excitement is something that you can pass along to younger generations, to bring in new people and volunteers and get people excited again about sharing the message of God and all the great things that your house of worship has to offer. So I hope some of the things that I have to offer from an education perspective will help you along your journey and we're not going anywhere. So we're here to help and I hope that's an inspiring message that you can take home and say, you know, we're, we're halfway, maybe we're 80% of the way there, and sometimes it's that last 10%, it's that extra 5% that you put in to make your video productions and your communications that much more effective. It's that little extra edge sometimes, I truly believe, that is what will help people make the decision to get off the couch where they're watching your church's live stream and actually walk through the front doors and shake your pastor's hand Get to know the people at your congregation. So those are the little things, and I hope there's enough here that we've talked about in the books and enough to get you moving and get the wheels spinning because it's a beautiful world and it's really incredible. And I, I, I want to hear your success stories. The Worship Summit, we're doing it every single year, and it's been so exciting to see what's happened. So join the Churches That Live Stream Facebook group at the link below where you can just chat any time of the day, 365 days a year. We've got folks posting in there, answering questions, and everyone's helping each other out. So be part of the community. That's my session today. Thanks a lot, everybody. Bye.